How much are you allowed to talk about on a general basis your nine years or eight, whatever it was with, with CIA? I mean, I'm, I don't... I don't know how to answer that question, but we, why don't we like, just go into it and okay. I'll navigate through. All right. So just to give people some background who don't have it and aren't familiar with you, after you left the Navy SEALs in 06, how long was it before you went and joined the CIA and how did that work? What did they bring you in to do? Uh, they brought me... <clears throat> so when I, when I left, I did a quick pump uh, at the State Department. It was a horrible experience, lasted about a week, maybe two weeks. And uh, I said, get me a flight home. I'm fucking out of here. Went home and um, I had, I didn't know these were the two things at the time, but I was being recruited uh, by a friend uh, to go into, to try out for CIA. And then I was being recruited also by another company to go to work for NSA. <clears throat> and... Um, which actually the NSA was paying more at the time, but the I went I wound up going with what wound up being the agency because I had personal friends and people that I'd worked with prior to and the and the SEAL teams that were vouching for that program and that was that was extremely important to me. Who am I going to be working with and what backgrounds? What kind of knowledge do these guys have? I don't want to be working with. No offense, but. Um, with the level of work that I was anticipating we were going to be doing, I didn't want to be out there with a with a Bank of America security guard right. or, a, or a local cop. I want right. to be with guys that have been around and seen some real shit overseas. You know, not that these guys don't see anything, but I, I like to be with my own. I know what we're capable of, and I know what they're capable of, and um, I feel more comfortable with with my peers. So I chose that, and. So what it wound up being at the beginning was it started out as protection for um, people like Bustamante, mm. right? People that are going out, getting information, meeting with meeting with uh, assets, all that kind of stuff. Then this was a the program that I was on was an was a very it was a new program, and the agency did not realize the capabilities that we brought to the table at first so the requirements were i think you had to have at least six years special operations to get in the door <clears throat> and so that specific portion within the agency was i mean there was a ton of experience there and they didn't realize what all we were capable of it was these guys can do a lot more than protection. They can do surveillance. They can do, they, they can, we can pretty much do anything. Mm. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a large, at this point, it's a now a large special operations unit where you're drawn from Green Berets, Navy SEALs, SEAL Team 6, Delta, Green Berets, Air Force PJs, uh, Marine Reconnaissance, uh, Marine Raiders, which are special activities guys, and um, and you combine all of that knowledge into one unit. That's what you get. And they started so when you get when you go out into the field and you have a good boss, and they're like, "Oh man, I wish we had this capability." It's like, "Well, fuck, we can do that." Mm. What do you want to do? Well, we want to set up comms and be able to push out a surveillance position over here to watch this portion of the border. Yeah, no problem. Well, what do you want? You know, we need to do this. Okay, well, and, and so all these new capabilities started getting brought to the table, and then that started spreading, and it became a lot more than just basic protection. Were, were you all over, or were you, I know you can't say, like, specifically where, but did you specialize in a certain set of countries, or did you just send as needed? Uh, they just needed send you where? as needed. I mean as needed all over the world but at the time that i was in the majority of us went to the middle east because that's where all that's where everything was kicking off what did you learn in the cia in your experience there in all these places if anything what did you learn about the world that you didn't already learn in your experience deploying as a navy seal uh well when you're when you're a seal it's 
it's let's kick indoors, let's go after one guy, and you don't really see all the other pieces that that happen. You don't see the intelligence piece much. You don't you don't see how everything kind of comes together. You're just a small part. At the agency, you start to see how everything comes together. You see the intelligence come in. You see the analysts get the intelligence. You see the hits happen. You see how long some of these things take. Um, you know, when I was at a SEAL, sometimes I would get really frustrated, like, why is this guy still alive? We could have killed this guy a long time mm. ago. Well, maybe we didn't kill him a long time ago because we're still getting information out of him. And as much of a shithead as he is, he's leading you to bigger bigger bad guys, worse bad guys, and you get them. And so basically, if you're lucky, you know, in the agency, you get a guy that's in the middle of a network. You keep that guy, you pay that guy. Yeah, we know he's a dirtbag and a scumbag and the worst of the worst, but his friends, you know, you get all of them. And then at the end, you know, maybe there's some kind of deal made or maybe he gets out outed too, you know. And so you – but you get to see all of that stuff kind of come together from – beginning to the end thank you for watching the video guys please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below